You know, one of the uh, challenges in, in some of these microcredit schemes uh, globally is, is the issue of, uh, obviously, repayment. Uh, the fact that you would envisage that there should be some amount of default that would take place. Can you give us a sense of what the expectation of the federal government is as it relates to projections on those who will pay back and those who will simply take the money and essentially run away with it? We have, we have confidence uh, that uh, the, the, the ordinary Nigerian, uh, the common man, they are sufficiently excited by the prospect of getting this kind of uh, help to lift them up that they will do their, uh, their level best to keep it going. You know, uh, it's collateral free, uh, but we ensure that the people that get this loan are the people that actually need it uh, because we do the enumeration, you know, where people ply their trade. You know, so we go to the marketplaces, we go to all the places where, where they move around, where they do their stuff. You know, so, so we know that, yes, this person is actually engaged in this trade, uh, and then they are enumerated there, the information is, is, is got in, and then we give it to them. Mm. So in, in terms of uh, repayment, that's why we said if, if you bring it back, uh, if, if, if you repay in, in six months, you know, you get 15. So, so, so that, that, that becomes an incentive uh, mm -hmm. uh, because so naturally repay. people want to, uh, to, everybody wants to prosper. And this is the point, you know, the, the president is, is determined to ensure that Nigerians at that level are also lifted up to come and be part of, of the prosperity that is uh, uh, on course in our country. Now, when you look at the uh, entire scope of the project, you know, we, we hear a lot about how it works, but then the question is, where is it being funded from? That hasn't been made clear to the public. What is the source of funding for the Trader Money Initiative? In, in, in a broad sense, uh, uh, the, the, the Trader Money is like the second leg of our microcredit scheme. Uh, you know, we have the uh, Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, the GEEP, which is one part of the Social Investment Program. And the Social Investment Program that includes homegrown school feeding, where today we are, we are, we are feeding uh, over 9 million school pupils in 25 states. Uh, we have the Empower, where today we have half a million uh, graduates who were otherwise unemployed that are now engaged. Uh, we have the conditional cash transfer, where uh, about, about 300,000 uh, poor Nigerians are receiving 5,000 Naira every month. So, so the microcredit is the fourth level of it. Now, so, so the trader money is a part of the microcredit. And like I said, the reason why we came out with the trader money is because we found out that you know, those petty traders were actually missing in action in benefiting from the microcredit. So where does the money come from? It comes from the budget of the social investment uh, uh, program. We know one of the very troubling statistics as it relates to that is obviously when you look at our commercial banks, deposit money banks, only 98% uh, of loans are going to 2% of Nigerians. Uh, so I, we're all kind of hopeful that, uh, that this might be able to make a dent in that. But some people are saying this is just too small. Uh, that two million out of the whole range of, uh, of, of, petty, of Nigerian petty traders is just too small. That, you know, how much of an impact can it actually make on the economy? What are your thoughts about that? We are confident uh, that this program is going to help in our financial inclu inclusion strategy, you know, which is a broader strategy of this government, uh, uh, because uh, we are not going to stop at two million, you see. Uh, two million is the, uh, is the target for now and the end of the year. And this is something that is very important to, to this presidency, uh, to ensure that Nigerians at that level are lifted up. Very, very important to uh, both the president and the vice president, and they're going to push it rigorously. This government is going to push it rigorously. When we reach 2 million, we go to the next level. We keep pushing, because it is very important to this, uh, to, to this presidency that Nigerians at that level are also brought in uh, so that they can also add value to the economy and also improve their lives. Very important to us. I would be remiss not to mention uh, the, the recent public uh, back and forth that we have heard from uh, between your principal, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, and uh, his predecessor in office, al Haji Atiku Abubakar, over the issue of restructuring. Uh, we have uh, essentially heard the former Vice President say that, you know, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo represents a thinking within the federal government about restructuring that essentially the accusation is that, you know, that this government is not serious about restructuring and that it's failing to determine what restructuring actually entails. What is your response to that idea? Well, you know, uh, anybody that takes uh, the, the due diligence to look at the issues, we uh, come to a certain conclusion that 
there hasn't been, since 1999, there hasn't been any uh, government, any federal government, that has shown the kind of commitment that this government has shown uh, to the issue of restructuring. Uh, uh, I believe, and this is my own personal view, uh, that the Vice President uh, has shown very clearly that uh, whether he was Attorney General in Lagos or as Vice President, he continues to push for restructuring. Now, the, 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 the point uh, that the, the Vice President makes is that look, he, he doesn't believe in, uh, in the geographical rearrangement that says, oh, let us add 18 more states, as was recommended in the constitutional uh, uh, conference report. Yeah, we believe that, look, I mean, we have 36 states and quite a few of them are struggling. So why had 18? He doesn't believe that we have to bring regional governments. So, so if you bring regional government, what happens to the states? What happens to the governors? Now, isn't that going to mean that you had another lever of bureaucracy to the structure, you know, uh, which is, as it were, uh, a little bit uh, problematic because you have states that can pay salaries in some instances. So he's saying that why don't let us focus on fiscal federalism? How can we get more powers to the state as they are? You know, how can we uh, uh, bring about state police? The vice president, sitting vice president, has advocated for state police, you know, uh, more than any other uh, uh, person in government, in my view, since 1999. And not only advocating for it, actually pushing for it. You know, that is a critical element mm. of, of, of restructuring. State police, you know, uh, 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 fiscal federalism, giving more resources and more powers to the state to be able to handle their own affairs. You know, Mr. Conde, this is a, a conversation that will go on for a long time, uh, because, particularly in the absence of a clear definition as to what restructuring means from the various perspectives involved. Uh, but at this juncture, unfortunately, we've run out of time. just want to thank you for coming on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. I've been talking to the senior special assistant to the vice president on media and publicity, Mr. Laulu Akonde. At this juncture, we will take a short break. Our viewers, please do stay with us.